In problem 21, we are going to look at the beach ball diagrams or in other word, focal mechanisms. And this question is requesting to identify the type of the faults and map it and show which block it's moving down or up. And also it's asking to place the P, T and N axes, so uh, which stands for um, pressure, uh, tensile, and uh, null, uh, which represents, you know, uh, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma 1. So N stands for null, which is sigma 2, P stands for pressure, which is representing the direction of sigma 1, and T stands for tension, or tensile, and <clears throat> that is representing sigma 3. The center of the stereo net, it's plotted in the colored zone, which is black here. If this is the case, then you are dealing with the reverse faults. If the intersection of the two planes, okay, is sitting uh, somewhere between the center and primitive circle, then you are dealing with the oblique fault, all right? So this is a reverse oblique fault. Um, here in this graph, we have two planes. One is this, and the other one is this. One of them is fault, and the other one is axillary plane. And we don't know which one is fault or axillary plane, that's why we are giving two options on the map, one with the strike of east-west and the other one with the strike of north-south. And um, <clears throat> because they are reverse fouled, so we know in which direction they are dipping and which block should move up or down with respect to the type of the fault. The reason why we don't know which plane is fault or which one is axillary plane because these type of graphs are uh, provided based on the seismic records and uh, based on you know seismograms and we we can have potentially no observation in the field and you know you don't really need to see the fault at the earth surface or in the seismic data to, or the seismic cross-sections to find out what type of the fault we are dealing with. Um, based on the seismic records from the earthquakes, we should be able to obtain the focal mechanisms or beach ball graphs and therefore we have two options which we don't know which one is fault and which one is auxiliary plane or we can do the educated guess based on the regional geology of the area. So if you are expecting the fault should orient, for instance, east-west in that region, there is a high potential of being the fault as, sh as is shown in this uh, example. Um, <clears throat> let's continue with the, uh, with the, uh, with the other um, examples in this question. Uh, and we're going to see more details. All right, so it seems I need to show uh, the P, T, and axes on the example uh, that we already discussed. Let's do that first, and then we can move on to the next example. So always the intersection of the fault plane and auxiliary plane, that's going to be null, okay? It's N stands for null, and that is corresponding to sigma 2. The next one, uh, we're gonna, uh, if this is the sigma 2, then we can find out the, the profile plane, right? And we know the sigma 1 and sigma 3, or in another word, P and T, should uh, plot it along that dashed line. So what we're gonna do, again, uh, we have done this before, you have two planes, you find the, uh, the middle uh, uh, point, all right. For instance, here I'm gonna take this point, and 90 degrees off from that, I have the other point, 
and I don't know at this point which one is P and which one is T. But we can discuss uh, to find out which one is which. So here we know this is the reverse part. So in that case, the area that is uh, limited to the fault planes, right, from both sides, this area is experiencing the upward movement or it's under, you know, uh, compression, right? So if, um, if I show um, this area, it's a compressed area, okay, which I'm going to uh, show with C, okay, that's the compressed area, and the other <coughs> white zones I'm going to show with the dilation, okay, with D, <coughs> and um, you can right now using this compression or dilation, regions, you should be able to uh, name those blue dots, right? So if your compressional zone is sitting like that, then the axis of the force should be perpendicular to that, right? So in that case, this point here, okay, that's going to be the P because this is the force axis, right? If the force is applied in that direction, then the area in the middle of this stereonet it's gonna pop up, right? So in that case, that's the P. This one is T, and always the T and C goes together, right? The the tensile force and the compressional zone, okay, they go together, and dilation and the pressure, or in another word, dilation zone with the pressure. Uh, axis it's gonna be uh, uh, plotted together right so normally I use the word like take care or delicious pizza as a you know as an indicator for myself to remember uh, which one is which uh, I'm gonna move on to the next example and uh, we're gonna work on that so as we mentioned here we have two options of the fault planes okay that one it's going like that and the second one i'm going to show with the blue it's going like that right and i would uh, highlight the intersection which is no right let's place this one no or sigma 2 and uh, as you know if the sigma 2 is um, on the center of the stereo net, in that case, you are dealing with the uh, struck asleep fault, right? Okay, this is a struck sleep, and uh, we can also get more details. Normally, you can place the arrows that going from the white segment to the black segment okay from white zone to the black zone and that's going to show the sense of the shear if if the if the red one is the fault then it has to be uh, a left lateral struck asleep fault if the blue is the fault in that case um, you're going to have this kind of shearing and indeed if the fault is north south then you might uh, have the right lateral movement. Um, all right, we have the type of the fault, we have the maps, and we need to show the N, P, and T. Okay, we knew that this is N, so uh, the primitive circle, that's going to be profile plane, so one point is here and the other one point is here so we know the black uh, segment is the area that is experiencing compressional or upward movement and the white zone is experiencing dilation or downward movement right and we know the force axis which is P okay it has to be in the dilation zone so I'm gonna place the P here and T here. 
So because the P and T is sitting on the primitive circle, you can show um, in both uh, directions like that. All right. Next one. Um, pretty simple. So you see the center is in the um, in the uh, white zone, in the dilation zone, and the intersection of these two planes is uh, located between the center and primitive circle. In that case, this is oblique, and because the center is in the white uh, dilation zone, in that case, that's going to be a normal. So this fault indeed is the oblique normal. So this is the first option, and this is the second option. All right, and we know this one is dipping towards north. The other fault is dipping towards uh, southeast. And because it has some oblique movement, um, which means we might have a right lateral or le left lateral component. So if we are dealing with the first fault, or first possible fault, we should have this kind of shearing. Okay, you can show it here as well. Or if the other one is the fault, in that case, you would have this kind of shearing, right? So I'm going to show it something here. All right, we have the type of the fault, we have the maps, and uh, let's place the null um, here. So the profile plane is going to be somewhere here, right? So the one um, axis uh, here, and the next one. Um, probably uh, somewhere here so because here we have a dilation zone that's gonna be P this is compressional zone that's gonna be T next uh, we have okay we have two options of the file the strikes are the same but one is dipping towards west the other one is dipping towards east it's a pure fault. There is no oblique movement because the intersection of these two planes are sitting on the primitive circle, right? Because the center is sitting on the area that uh, experiencing the compression. In that case, this is a reverse fault. Okay, it's a pure reverse fault. So if I'm going to show the axes. So here, this is N, you can show it in both ends. So that's gonna be the profile plane. So the one in the middle, okay, as you know, uh, if we have pure reverse fault, in that case, the sigma three is gonna be perpendicular to the Earth's surface, and that's gonna be plotted at the center of the stereo net. So the sigma three, it's gonna be correlated with T, and the T, is sitting on the area that is experiencing compression and the P it's gonna sit here next um, all right again here we see the intersection which is N or Sigma 2 it's sitting on the uh, center and that's gonna be struck a slip fault We can plot the possible faults, and if this is the fault, in that case, we have either sharing like that or like this. So, if this is the fault, then we have this kind of sharing, and on the other possibility, we have this kind of sharing. And uh, if we're gonna show the n here, the intersection is n, so another one it's gonna sit here, right. So because it's in the compressional zone, that's going to be T, all right? And the other one is P, because it's on the primitive circle, I'm supposed to show in two uh, ends. The next one, again, simple, it's just pure normal fault. Why? Because the intersection of these two is sitting on the primitive circle. And because the center is sitting on the dilation 
zone. In that case, that's the normal fault. So the faults uh, striking to the same direction, but one is dipping towards uh, north and the other one is towards south. Actually, um, I said two faults. Indeed, if one of them is fault and the other one is auxiliary plane, and because we don't know which one is which, so we, we, we mentioned two potential faults. Indeed. Um, all right, we have the map. There is no uh, lateral movement or shearing. Why? Because the intersection is sitting on the primitive circle. So uh, let's locate the N. It's going to be the intersection, right? And here, this is the uh, profile plane. And one should sit here and the other one here, half here and half there. So the one at the center, this is a normal fault, and you, you remember that when we have a normal fault, in that case, sigma 1 is perpendicular to the Earth's surface, or it's at the center of the stereo net. So sigma 1 or P has to be here, right? A pressure axis, it's sitting on the dilation zone, and the tensile force or tension, uh, it's sitting on the compression zone. Right, this is T, this is T, and this is T. Last one, so we see the center of the uh, stereo net, it's sitting on the compressed zone, so that's going to be reverse, and the intersection is sitting between the center and primitive circle, so there is some oblique movement. So that's the oblique reverse fault. And the possibility of the fault, one is with this strike and the other one this one. And of course we have some kind of shearing, either is like that, which is going to be on this fault. Or, let me show with another color, or something like that, which is going to be on this fault. Alright, so in terms of the axis, this is north, and if we plot the, uh, the uh, profile plane, one axis is here and the other one is here. So because this one is sitting on the compressed zone, that's going to be um, indeed T, and the other one is going to be P. Alright, we are done with this problem.